go. Ah, here we are. We are live. This is Love Speaks Love, and I am Denise, your host. And my beautiful guest today is Melina Ferguson. Welcome, sweetheart. Thank you, Denise, for having me. <laughs> my pleasure. I'm excited for this. Um, and I will just mention that I'm expecting a delivery. And it should have come like the latest half an hour ago. So we're just hoping <laughs> that it's not going to happen in the middle of the uh, Heart to Heart Connect. It might do. That's all good. Okay, might just do that now. Ah, while people are gathering. Thank you, everybody who's joined us so far, and feel free to share it. <clears throat> okay, so I invite us all to breathe into our hearts. <sighs> breathing out anything of the day so far or the day ahead and breathing love into your beautiful, beautiful heart. and feeling all of our hearts beating together as one. And as that love spreads around your body and goes into every cell, let us just extend that heart awareness out to the heart of Gaia. Feeling Gaia's love returning to us feeling her gratitude for all that we are and all that we do. And extending that heart awareness out to the heart of the sun. And feeling those beautiful solar waves moving into our bodies. All of this energy is moving deep into the DNA and extending our heart awareness out to the heart of Source Creator. And feeling that beautiful energy from Source Creator gently going into every cell of our bodies. And if there's anyone or any situation, anything that you would like to send that love to now, let us do that. Let us imagination, imagine those situations held within our hearts held within the hearts of Gaia and the sun and source, held within love. So breathing deeply and bringing our awareness again back to our heart. And if your eyes are closed, opening them whenever you're ready. <sighs> Welcome to Love Speaks Love. It's gorgeous to have you here. Lovely to be here. Thank you. <laughs> oh, your internet went really slow then. You went all robotic. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Just at that moment, it's been fine all the time that we were chatting before. Um, <laughs> all right, so I'm just going to share this and I'm going to have my phone up so that I can see the comments. Turn the volume down. Wonderful. So we connected um, last year and so I'd seen you chatting, chatting with, with Todd. I'm not sure if I saw your first one, actually. There's, there's lots that I don't know about you. 
Um, yeah. So how did all this, how did all this spiritual stuff happen to you? What put you on this path? Or was it something that you were always on? I probably felt like I was on that path when I was little um, and I was immersed in uh, nature, <clears throat> trees, the connection. Um, I kind of deviated away from like my family dynamics and went very inward with nature um, the, and the elemental kingdom. And I found um, I found home there. And I guess um, along the way, I actually became in those teenage years became lost again and forgot who and who I was and that connection was. And it was in my probably late teens, um, I, I think it was around when I was 18, nearly 19, I had a car accident. Um, a major car accident, but I was with um, five. There was five of us in the car, and um, it it the tire blew at a hundred kilometers on the freeway, and then um, spun three times, and then flipped three times on the embankment. And um, I remember having a premonition, a very clear premonition, just before it happened, um, of how to sit upright and what was going to happen to the people in the car. And so um, I was in the middle and in the back and um, it didn't have any seatbelts. So <laughs> we all walked out injury, very injury free. Um, and um, I remember th thinking for a long time, like what was that, like that experience that could have put me on the other side of a choice point. And, um, and then so things started to kind of unravel after that. Like I kind of got back on my path and, I remember in 2001 when the 9-11 um, happened, which is kind of funny because my numerology and my name was is 9 and 11. <laughs> so um, that number kind of is very significant for me because it was a wake-up call um, to really step in and kind of lead me down this path, which ended up leading me um, into Victoria, where I've been for over 18 years now. And um, and I learnt, you know, the the kind of the first healing modality of, you know, Reiki and um, and connecting deeper with myself and my own intuition because I didn't before then I didn't trust myself, mm. and and that led me on to um, finding people and places and connections where I was reminded of my own. Um, experiences back when I was a child and um in I think it was 2007 end of 2006 uh 2007 I came across um and this is maybe where our connection comes in because it was the ring cedars of Russia books ah. yeah and I think you know, I remember Anastasia yeah the Anastasia books yeah yeah so and I think you said you read them right yeah, one, the first one. The yeah. first one. That woke me up. That, that, that book had my name in it, in, in the writing, I think. like, And I had a, I would actually had a very deep connection with um, Anastasia and she actually would come to me and give me messages. And we ended up, uh, my, me and my husband ended up buying a house um, and 18 months later, we sold it after I read that book and we bought five acres in the country um, where the magic actually started to happen because the, the, the block of land we have here was very run down. It needed a lot of um, assistance to, be, to come back to its, its natural, natural state. And, um, and I ended up meeting people that knew, um, that did geomancy, so land clearings, um, and um, people that started talking about dragons, you know, so there were little pockets of information and memory servicing for me. Um, but it was when that I was introduced to um, vibrational essences, which is elixirs, 
um, for the soul, the body, mind, and the soul, that everything started to come into place. The energy of water was very um, natural for me to work with. Um, the connection, the memory of it, I was able to um, really use use it on the land because it was when um, when I when I came into contact uh, with these vibrational seeds, I would plant them into the earth, but none of them would actually um, grow because if you have a vibrational seed and the land is not up to the same state, mm. there's no there's no balance. So that's when I was shown to make the four um, the four vibrational essences for the four phases of the moon. And I, in each moon phase, I would um, bring the um, the land back onto balance with every phase of the moon through those drops into the earth. And I, I just fell in love. I fell in love with the process of creating a mother essence, setting my intention and placing it. Um, we have a, a very beautiful magical labyrinth. That was another thing that I was told to put on the property. Um, and it's an Avalon priestess labyrinth and it's huge and you would walk through and then end up in the middle into the heart and I would sit the mother essence down in the middle and I would just start creating and moving my hands and it was like this cosmic dance with me and the earth and it would be transferred all into the water and I just fell in love with that process yeah Wow, there's there's so much there, like um, the water, especially because of all the elements. What is what is different for us here? Like, you know, water permeates all the other elements more than all the other all the other elements permeate each other. Um, mm -hmm. And water, water is just everywhere. You know, it's in the air. And water holds the memory of everything. I mean, we know that water holds memory, but it it holds the memory of everything, all our spoken words, because we have water vapor. Every time we breathe, we're breathing out water. Like it just contains everything about everything. Yeah. And not just yeah. here, but universally as well, because it's, you know, it's not just from this planet, it's it's from the cosmos too. Yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah. Can you yes. expand on the vibrational seed, what you meant by that? Oh, okay. So um, after I read the books and, you know, in the, I think remember in the first book, she talked about putting the seed under the mouth and then um, this is for vegetable seeds um, and fruit seeds and germinating them and collecting the DNA and playing with it. Then she showed me um, when I got onto the land after we did our veggie patch and everything, then she showed me that um, the palmistry lines in the hands um, and then the fingers all connect to the planets. And that if I were to put a medicinal seed into a particular line of the hand and then connect it with the planet, so I'd hold it like that. And then, um, and then I was told to use the dragon breath on it to blow. And then, um, and then it was like the celestial energies would come down and create this um, higher um, energy and then it would, when it's released. Um, and so when she, Anastasia, and uh, it's almost like she was, she was communicating with me on a telepathic level, um, I was shown that I had done this in a past incarnation where she was my teacher but we never got to learn re I never got to finish my work with her because it was in the days when the witching you know days and I, I remember being in a forest I had the vision in meditation I was walking in the forest I had my notes we sat down she was she had all the planets the astrology everything she was teaching me and then um it these men stormed in and took us and I never got to finish what I learned. And when I sat down on this land, she retaught, like she finished the work that, that was, that I never got to finish to, to see what I needed to see. 
And, um, and that's how I started working with vibrational seeds, with the medicinal seeds, um, like the herbs that we use in our garden. So, um, you know, chamomile, mugwort, um, grandfather sage. Um, yeah, so it was, that was a really beautiful process. And um, I started working, like, because they all come in um, quite a lot of um, uh, big packets of seeds, like thousands of them. And I thought, how am I going to, you know, like go from one, like connect all the seeds. And I was just showing um, one seed, like a drop of water is connected to all. So when you hold the one seed, it you're actually transforming the whole of all of the energy of the seeds. So yeah, that was, that was a really beautiful process. And then um, people started sending me seeds um, from around Australia and connecting to their seeds as well. And seeds that had not been genetically modified because there was a certain point where you, I just knew you couldn't work with them. But seeds that had been sprayed um, and cotton seeds that were on the New South Wales coast and they were sending me and then I'd energetically strip that energy away and then bring it back to its natural state. So that was a really beautiful process. And then, yeah, and then it kind of led into the energy of water. Yeah, wow. Yeah, the Anastasia books, I, I've only heard people in Australia talk about them. I've not heard anyone mention them since I left Australia. And it was a friend yeah. who, who'd read the books that taught me about putting the seed in. And I was chuckling yeah. when we were talking because I planted some pak choy, I think it is, not bok choy, pak choy, which is similar. So it's like, yes. and yeah. they're so tiny, they're like poppies. <laughs> And I do every single one. <laughs> and then I'd be like, mm, you know, you can't find it because it's so small. And then I I dropped the little pot over and they were all scattered everywhere. It, it was, yeah, it was pretty funny, but they grew, they grew really well. But I'm really glad to, <laughs> that would have made it so much easier if I could have just yeah. one or, you know, a few. I didn't really think about that. And then knowing that it would, that it would spread to all the others. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. It is. It's you just don't know the capability until you actually give give everything a go. Like I was just like, how am I going to, you know, you wrap your mind around how are you going to sit here and try and work with every oh my goodness. Just, you know, and then and then the images that just keep getting shown and shown. And it's like, oh well, that makes sense. <laughs> That's a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. So do you work with the and this is something that I learned in Australia as well. Um, when I was when I was working for my accommodation at the Arts Factory Backpackers, I gardened for a while. And Gardener Steve used to know a lot about like the moon cycles and, and when he's best to like plant things, transplant them, uh, cut them, all that kind of stuff as well. And I, I don't have that knowledge anymore. I'm sure I can look it up though. Um, but I found that really interesting. So I think if I have this right, so when it's a new moon, the energy of plant is in the roots I think so that's a good time to like transplant them um yeah and then there's the then the um the sun and the moon like also ascend and descend so when the moon's actually closest to the earth um because it goes in waves um it, that's also a really good time to work with the earth and everything under the earth and when it's higher, you'd work with plants that are actually um, leafs, leafy plants that when it, you know, they're reaching more up towards the moon. So, yeah, it is a beautiful process. Gardening is just so, if you're immersed completely in nature, if you want to have that, you know, you're looking to make the next steps of how can I just put your hands in the earth and work with seeds and garden. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've loved having a garden this year and just seeing things grow. And, and I get really excited, like, you know, go out and speak to everything every day. And I, I probably told you this, I was thinking of doing, and I haven't done it, and it might be a bit late now because it's all, everything's kind of dying off. But I wanted to do like a conscious gardening video. Um, oh, talk, yeah. <laughs> talk yeah. Gardening with light codes was Ivania's like, name for it. Yeah, yeah. Because um, when, I, when I plant a seed... I do all that first and you know energize energize the seeds and then when I put them in and cover them up I imagine that beneath it and I say I imagine but I'm, I'm feeling that it's through that that it's created an octahedron beneath it and then it yeah. connects to the octahedron of, of Gaia's heart as well yeah. 
Oh, yeah. And even one and I used, side too. Yeah, I used to crystal grid them under the earth. Like uh, I put it, I'd put um, uh, Argate moss in and because um, they that's the crystal that would connect with this um, the roots of the of the actual seed and I would yeah I would grid it underneath the soil and then I'd plant yeah nice yeah At the chalice Fog gardens in Glastonbury I was chatting to the um to the gardener there um and one thing that he does there and chalice Fog gardens are, are just in my the energy is immaculate like it's it's messy in places like it's awesome it, it's not you know perfectly manicured there are places yeah. where things are allowed to grow for the bees and you know weeds here and there is fine it, it's not like it all has to be perfect and they get um they they put crystals so when they plant something they they plant a crystal north south east and and west as well um yeah. And what he does is he leaves them out of the ground a little bit so that children might find them and then oh. be like, oh, my God, treasure. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Do adults do that too? <laughs> That'd be me. Me too. Yeah. Me too. One of the, um, when I was in Glastonbury, and I've, I've just shared a little bit of this experience, it's, it's one of the things I'm going to put on next. And I was gifted... I was gifted three spheres energetically in a in a deep meditation in the abbey um ruby red emerald green and gold um and later that day when i sat on one of the benches because i was staying at chaliceville garden it, underneath the bench was this tiny little blue sphere and oh, you wow. know there's not that many sphere i mean you know you, you do get them and it didn't look like it was from a necklace there was no hole through it um, I was going to write a question that I could just say to you, answer this, <laughs> um, while I go and um, answer the door. But okay. See if you can fill in, <laughs> sorry to leave you on the spot, um, <laughs> fill in with some gardening stuff if you can, or whatever, whatever you feel, essences, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Melina Solo. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I've actually been to Glastonbury. Uh, we went in 2009 uh, for a big holiday and that's the first time I, I went and it was, it was beautiful. Um, I, took, I went by myself and then I took my daughter and then the whole family came in. So we took advantage of um, our three days in Glastonbury to um to really immerse ourselves in the chalice well gardens i didn't want to leave <laughs> it was um it was beautiful and i met a dear dear beautiful um brother there who i'd only ever connected to online and his um his name was andrew hobbs and he writes the most incredible poetry um in those gardens and um, if you ever see him him to you because it's um it's it's he's he's a beautiful man with beautiful writing and I hope to get back one day um to um to Glastonbury and England We actually got a lot of um, vegetables in our in our garden because we're on five acres. We have um, we and we're in about an hour outside of Melbourne. We're under a mountain, so it's always about three to four degrees uh, less here, and so it gets very very cold. And so we've got greenhouses now, um, and all of our um, and, and in the cold, um, all of our vegetables. 
are actually thriving in the greenhouse. They're um, they're really beautiful. So we've got every single fruit and veggie you can think of um, this year um, coming up, and yeah, it's beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I was like, what do I talk about? Um, I was just saying we have a um, greenhouse. I think I told you when I last spoke to you, we've got these massive greenhouses and everything's thriving in it because the weather here is a lot colder um, than in Melbourne. And we're, we seem to be under a lot of cloud cover throughout the year. Um, so we have an extended winter goes from, from about April to even pushing now. It's still quite cold. Um, yeah, that's what I was saying. We've planted so much in there and everything is thriving this year. So we have another beautiful harvest coming in summer. Just, I just put my glasses over there. I'm not going far. Okay. <laughs> ah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, it's really interesting. And, you know, I talk to everything as well. And um, before I mow the glass, the, the glass, the grass, I let the grass know that I'm going to mow it and also the creatures as well. Yeah, yeah. And I was particularly thinking of the frogs. And one time when I did it, as soon as I sent the message out, this one frog was going boink, boink, away from, yeah. away from the garden. Yeah. So yeah. I fully believe that they get the message. And to yeah. me, it's like a courtesy to the grass. What I hear is, is that they can kind of withdraw that energy from where they're going to be mowed. Um, I, don't, I don't feel that they feel pain as such, but it's just a, a courtesy, really. You know, we yeah. wouldn't mind someone just coming and cutting our hair without us knowing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I absolutely agree. And um, because a lot of trees also, you know, um, the deciduous trees and everything um, and the fruit trees that need pruning back and everything like that, um, we, um, and my husband's actually learned this along the years because I remember just saying, you can't just cut, cut their arms off or, <laughs> this is like, you have to, there has to be a, a mutual conversation happening, a flow, you know, I'm actually, is it okay? And, you know, can I do this? And, um, yeah. And then that's when you see, um, again, um, everything thrive because you're working with, yeah. like the elementals and the nature spirit and the plant kingdom and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. And when we do that with trees as well, like if there's a big, like so we've had quite a few big storms here and I mean, it gets really windy. So you have branches that topple down trees that topple down and it, and we go in and it's like you connect, even though the tree has fallen, it's like, there's this like, process that you go through that you just go thanks for holding space for this property see you you know yeah see you and we, we usually replant more yeah nice I, I always feel that if one's chopped down we should be planting at least two and it's yeah plants. yeah 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 I do the same when I when I prune and I kind of ask you know, if I'm just cutting a, a flower off or something to take it inside, you ask permission and, and where shall I cut? Like if I'm pruning the roses or whatever, where shall I cut? And my eyes are just taken to a particular spot and I double check. I'm like, yeah, is that all right with you? And yeah. yeah. When I went to, to see Gog and Magog, which are the two ancient oak trees in Glastonbury, that they reckon are about a thousand years old. Um, and one of them was burnt accidentally um, in 2017 and it's just a shell now um, I kind of thought it was a style so I went over it but actually it's a fence it's on private property um, but I wanted to I wanted to touch the touch both trees and the energy from I think it's Gog that is one, the one that was burnt is just as strong if not stronger as as Magog like it's still holding the energy of the tree um, yeah. And I find that really interesting and it makes a lot of sense that even if it's made into furniture or whatever, it's still holding the energy of that particular tree, but also the collective energy of, of the species. Um, yeah. And I had like a favourite tree that, um, that I used to go and see a lot and half of it blew down in the storm. And I wasn't sure if someone was going to come and like, you know, cut the rest of it down. And 
you know, sentimentally, I was feeling that. And I said, yes. what happens if that happens? Um, and obviously some of the consciousness stays in, in the tree, but it's, it's like it just goes back into the collective sycamore consciousness or whatever kind of tree it is. And he said, and then I shall most likely be born again as a tree. <laughs> Yeah, another you know, another tree. Like it, it's just yeah, that energy just carries on. Yeah, and yeah, and then some of the trees um, here that have been like real grandmother, grandfather trees, um, and those beautiful indigenous trees that have been some have been taken down, which is really sad. But even when you tap into that energy, they actually feel like they've completed what they've needed to do here so they allow that um really old ancient energy to um disperse but, and leave and then allow the new energy to come in as well yeah that was really beautiful and when we had that massive storm um here in june which toppled thousands and thousands of trees in victoria um i the next day like the devastation was huge and i remember going in and going well what was that and I really felt like those um they were showing me like they were acupuncture points in the earth and in order and like because I'm in Victoria um which is quite dense here it, it was like this um when those trees trees came up and out it was like they let out this huge um amount of steam like you know it was building 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 I was like Phew. And then, yeah, those acupuncture points were just released. And I felt like it was a huge release. So it's like, thank you. Thank you so much for um, being being that um, in that space to hold it and then allowing us to have that release too. That's really interesting. And I similar, I got a kind of similar message from the from the sycamore tree. Um, who actually said that he, so I asked what the name was and I don't think trees actually have names but I think for the for the purpose of us who associate with that they can like give themselves a name um and I just come back from New Zealand at, at the time and he says he said that his name was Triva <laughs> like <laughs> Triva like yeah. Triva with a Kiwi accent and I just thought that was funny I was like oh you've got a sense of humor um mm. And the message I got from him and his energy, it does feel like a he, like some trees do feel female and some do feel male. And even within a species, like some feel predominantly male or female within the species, but mm. I think that can vary. Um, what he said was that in the storm, when it, when it banged on the, on the ground, that that was a huge release as well, that that was like, mm. a, you know, the sound and, and, and I'd done a lot of light language activations in that in that spot too. Um, yes, so it was interesting for me that it was that particular tree that you know that lost half of its um, half of its physical being. But interestingly, and it kind of fell on a bit of a slope. And now I can get into the top branches because I can like go up the slope, which I couldn't actually do before. So ah, yeah, yeah. nice, <laughs> yeah. So when you talk about um, this, this is something of interest with me as well. And I've connected with the spirit world, fairies, tree spirits, nature spirits for a long, long time. Do you have, because I'm never quite sure of this, I feel that the tree itself has its own spirit, like a, I think, do they call that a dyad, like D-Y-A-D? But I also feel that there are fairies um, and nature spirits that help the trees that are kind of assigned to those particular trees. Mm. And my feeling is as well that the bird song, for example, there's so much more to bird song than we realize in terms of, um, you know, helping that the sound actually works with the trees to help the flowers bloom. And that's partly what the nature spirits are there doing as well. They're like helping. And I can't, on a mental level, I can't get my head around this, but it feels like, yeah, th there's like the spirit of the flower or the tree itself, but there, there, there are fairies, elementals that come in that are kind of separate from that. 
as well is, is that how you you see it yeah um yeah I'm so fascinated with all that as well um like sometimes when I have that real elemental connection um I've I get um fairy wrens come in and just just like they're they're everywhere and they're and then they come up close and they come and I'm just like is that like are they is it that energy that's you know that's showing me that they're all connecting working together um I I the bird song's really interesting too um I've always thought because is it when sun sunset it's like everything starts to um go dormant and all the birds come in and rest and it's really quiet and then um I the first bird song I heard this morning because I knew I had to be up early um I it was at about just after five and it was a magpie and I'm like that's it that's that's the call okay (laughs) like everybody wake you know like awake from the slumber we're all ready to start you know this magical process of of how everything works I feel we as humanity are stepping into what or are going to see what this is truly like nature is all about soon I really feel like the veil between um these kingdoms are really going to come forth and show us how we can all start working together do you feel that too yeah I do and I feel that the messages from nature from the trees from the birds from whatever it is is getting louder and louder and also I kind of feel you know because when you start to tune into energies like the energy of a tree you can feel you touch the tree and you you can feel its energy and not all trees feel the same they you know they hold different different frequencies and different energies um so for example a pine tree is about cleansing and i find it interesting that where i was in in byron so many pine trees which are not native had been planted however what they do is cleanse i mean i guess eucalyptus does as well but Mm. pine really really cleanses so it kind of in a way feels appropriate that that is helping to cleanse you know a lot of a lot of the energy that was that was done as well yeah um but I, I feel the message is getting stronger and I think you know because a lot of us are feeling a deep buzz from the earth now and it's hard to tell whether it's from the earth from the cosmos but we can feel you know it's like the earth is vibrating and I mm. feel that that's going to get stronger and that people will pick up on on those energies as well so they won't be able to like <laughs> they'll hear a voice almost and you know be looking around and then the tree's going it's me it's me <laughs> <laughs> and often trees will wave but it's very slow because yeah. everything a tree does yeah. is, is slow but you you could put it down to the breeze but often there's a bit more to it than that and yeah. you know they're acknowledging acknowledging the um the connection and acknowledging that we've acknowledged them kind of thing so yeah. while they go that way yeah really slowly so you could miss it it's not like going like this because that's not how they yeah. work <laughs> yeah yeah or and and have you ever done the mimicking of the tree like when you've gone outside and you've stood stand and then you really anchor in from your hips down and then you just like yeah, it's just like this standing in front of the tree and doing the same kind of movement. So you're actually having this beautiful energetic exchange of what it feels like to be that solid, you know, tree, but then have so much flow and movement within you. Nice. Yeah. I've kind of done that, but not in front of a tree. I, I really like that idea. Yeah, it's beautiful. So tell me about, so you were making vibrational essences and you kind of, in a way, stepped back, but it, it, you've brought some new, different vibrational essences through now. Is that, is that right? The grace ones that then they're, they're new? Yeah. Um, so I'd been feeling for a while, um, probably around 2019, that I was um, 
it was kind of a feeling of stepping back from that sort of creation because I was like, all right, show me something new, show me something that hasn't been done before. Um, you know, like I, I don't want to keep making things that are still, you know, that every not everybody else is doing, but I just wanted to bring in something new, just show me that uniqueness. Um, and so was it the towards the end of last year, I got instructed to take all my vibrational essences I'd made. So there was like over 30 um, and I had turned them all into like into sprays as well. <clears throat> um, and, but so through the mother essence, um, I was instructed to grab all the bottles um, and put them in to walk them all through one by one, <laughs> all through my labyrinth and sit them around because I had created this chalice cup um, which I'd stuck the essence in um, because my labyrinth is um, in the middle is a portal and it ha it's attached to all the ley lines all through the earth um, and I put them all in a circle and one by one I it was a beautiful sacred ceremony where I gave them back to the earth which which was when well, part of the creation process um, and I just let go and um, and I was like all right so you know and it was very emotional it was you know letting all that go and not knowing oh my gosh <laughs> you know what's what's next so I just I just kind of let all that go and um, and then I was really into um, in December in December I was like you know, I really feel like the body is really important right now. The body, divine body intelligence um, helped me understand my own body, my divine body intelligence, the embodiment of what it's like to be human. <laughs> and then in January, I, um, I took a, I was on my bicycle with my two boys and we went around the block. And um, as I was coming around the corner, um, because we're on dirt roads, um, I was going way too fast. And I, the bike slid, I slid, and I slammed my whole left side of my body into the earth um, at high speed and, um, and fractured my kneecap and busted up my left side of my elbow. And so I'd spent those months really deeply connecting in to my body um, and my trauma and all, everything that had been um, pretty much in a backlog log state. So I really started to get to know my body. And um, it was, uh, I'd say probably beginning of September, I decided to do a entrepreneur course um, with Wanda and Luria on the Quantum Entrepreneurs. And in that time, of my own excavation of what it is, what well, what do you want, what do I want to bring to this world? And I was showing, um, because I thought maybe it was to do with working with children and the land, um, and bringing, you know, showing them the nature, creation, art, and everything. But um, no, it was something different. It was well, it wasn't something different. It was something brand new that I had never thought before, and I was literally flat back on the earth going having this you know um, very emotional conversation um with source and saying i don't know i i'm just surrendering um a wailing crying and just let it all go and then literally in a vision presented to me earth air fire water ether you know ether spirit and i'm like what is that and i'm just like and they're like, this is the new elemental body. The, what, what you have been working so hard in for the last, you know, years on this land, 12 years on this land, um, it's a reflection and it's mirrored. It has to be brought back into the body to connect the body because, um, you know, the earth, air, fire, water elements in nature um, are a reflection of what's in our body and is out of balance in our body. And so by bringing earth, air, fire, water um, back in to balance and creation, it, um, it, 
ignites um, the light, which is the spirit ether in our hearts and it lights up our cells and re starts rejuvenating the body. And that's what's, that's what's come through. And it's, um, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> I never thought that I would be creating more essences, but it, it kind of makes sense that this process and how we, um, we have forgotten what it's like to be in the body because, you know, I can be very fairy. <laughs> I can be very up there, but I've had to really anchor and bring everything back in and ground it all. So, um, yeah, it's been a beautiful process. Wow. And so accompanying that is, is the program as well, um, which is a, is, is that right? Does that, that's the same, that's the same theme? Yeah. So I've, I've just, I'm just holding a group of six women um, at the moment in a container where I'm actually, um, it's, yeah, it's a re uh, intimate retreat. And we started um, back in, oh, started about three and a half weeks ago. They're on their last actual of the fourth elements. They start again tomorrow, the, the last one before we, we start with either. And um, yeah, I'm actually, I was showing, even if they can't, um, people can, can't receive the, the actual bottles essences to take internally, that because I hold those energetic um, essences and I can drop them into my hands, I'm actually able to transfer the energy through with the codes. Um, and we do that one-on-one -on -one a week and plus have group calls. So it's, the experiences have been phenomenal. Like the, the processes, I'm actually on the journey with them. So I'm going through the whole process as well. So yeah, it's, um, and it's so nice to share with other people, like all of our experiences, even if it's little or it's huge, like it's nice to, because some people don't pick that, that up. And, and when you share that experience, they're like, oh, right, actually that was me too. So it's, it's been really beautiful. Yeah, wow. Wow. So you're planning to do more of those, I presume? Um, think probably in the new year. Yeah. 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 So um, I know I can't send my, at the moment, I can't send my um, bottles over to the US um, because there's a liquid law or something. <laughs> so um, we'll just wait, but yeah, for that. But yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just, I, I feel like I'm, I'm still unraveling from it. Like this, it actually feels like there's still more in it, mm. which is really beautiful too. How do you feel, can you, if you can put it into words, how do you feel different? I feel like I'm getting stronger. I feel like um, with each element, um, I'm actually on earth this week um, and I've done fire and water. So each element feels like um, like water was a very um, emotional sort of process as well, um, but very full of clarity uh, for me. Um, fire had me like pumped and full of um, taking action, but it also felt like it was working on the inside of, um, you know, with um, of lots of heat and movement. Um, as well in the body so I actually um, I'm actually finding that there is through all this stuff that's actually happening in the external world my world inside is becoming more harmonized it's, it's, it's becoming slower like I move slower I, I say I'm very aware of what's going on around me now which is yeah I think it's perfect yeah interesting that, that and stillness I I would imagine stuff could come up relating to that, you know, in that week. So mm. in Earth Week, you know, there, there could, what could it even be? Um, like fire, I would imagine emotionally there could be, like you say, kind of, you know, you didn't say this, but there, there could be like the fiery emotions coming up as well. So like you might feel wired, but there might also be like, you know, anger stuff or, or whatever relating to, to yeah. um, particular elements. Yeah, because I actually felt like there was a purification. I was, I've actually felt like I was walking on hot coals 
um, like walking through a fiery um, process that week as well, like burning out all of everything that was like still kind of attached and plus um, holding a group. <laughs> but I, I think that's the best way to go, isn't it? Because, you know, if you're in it, and you're having experience rather than stepping in and going, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure. I don't know. Like, even though I've created it, but to be in it, it feels so right. So right to, to do it with you know, other people as well. Yeah. And, and this, this, there's definitely integrity in that as well. Like, you know, not just coming on and, and pretending that everything's fine. If you're really going through it with the group, there's almost, yeah. there's almost an expectation. And, and I get this. Um, I understand where it comes from that the person holding the space has to like, you know, have it together. But that's not really necessarily how it is. And we come to a point, you know, sometimes, you know, doing Love Speaks Love sometimes you, you can feel, oh, am I going to be okay to do this? And then once, once you start, you kind of go into a different space and there's different energies coming through. Um, but I just see this so much more these days that people are really being honest and you know whether or not you're actually fit to hold space like that's not what I'm saying I'm not saying come on if yeah, you're no, actually no, I, yeah. able to hold space but but still within that we can be honest and say and it like you say when you when you share this has been going on for me this week this is this is how I'm feeling today and that yeah. just allows other people to be like yeah me too. Yeah, I know Me that too. one. That's exactly how I felt when I thought I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it too. <laughs> yeah, I had made the decision. Yeah, I, actually, I'm gonna do it too because mm. it, it's real. We're we're being real, and um, that's the only way forward. So, yeah, with our bodies. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen this on Gaia, but Mate Mateus de Stefano. Um, in his initiation series, he did something about the different geometries of, oh, did we talk about this? About the different geometries of, because um, he has the octahedron as being ether, but traditionally the octahedron was air. Did you say that it? Yeah, I think, it, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I found that really interesting. Like I resonate with it being ether. There seems to be something different in the five platonic solids. So that's the geometries that he's talking about and, and that one is, which makes a lot of sense that, that there would be one for each element. And it, I can see why the dodecahedron you might think was ether because it's a more complex of the basic mm. geometries. But at the same time, there's something special about, about the octahedron. Yeah, I think it's all shifting too. Yeah, because mm. that octahedron is playing a huge, huge role, I know, in my um, whole structure and like everything that's going on yeah and to me it's to do with the diamond light coats as well um yeah and I feel that the diamond light coats may well be octahedrons they may be more complex than that but I do I do link those two together um and the octahedrons some of the deepest work that I did when I was in Australia was, was octahedron related. There was, um, I don't know if I've shared this story with, with you, but one time on the beach in Byron, I felt like I was activating a pyramid out to sea and it was lifting from, you know, from the, from the sea floor. And as it was lifting up, I realized that it wasn't a pyramid, but it was actually an octahedron and it was coming out of, out of the ground and it was huge. And it was, at the time, it was the biggest activation that I'd ever done. And it was a drizzly day. It was wet. I was a bit grumpy because it was that, I was kind of under an umbrella, but I was still getting wet. It was that rain that is just everywhere. Um, <laughs> and I was getting a bit grumpy saying, are we, are we finished yet? Can I go inside? I'm getting wet. And I said, you know, show me a sign. If I'm supposed to stay here and do more, show me a sign. And instantly two dolphins jumped out of, out of the out of the sea like vertically normally they they're like you know they're like this they're surfing the waves and that's the one and only time that I saw them jump up like that and I'm like okay but the fact that it was raining meant because I was right at the back where the trees are and nobody walked in front of me while I was doing this activation not a single soul walked 
walked through between me and, and what I was doing, which I just thought was, wow. yeah, fascinating. And I was really quite tired after that. Like it, it was a big activation that I did. Um, yeah, and it feels like they're nodal points, the octahedrons. There's, there's a lot of like <clears throat> octahedron nodal points and it's to do with the crystalline lines of the earth that are kind of coming online now. Is what yeah. I feel. Like they're kind of like almost like junction boxes. They're, they're kind of, yeah, nodal points. So at places where I think not just, but at places where, where more than one line kind of meets and, and crosses over. But I feel that they're, they're almost like a directional, you know, like the lines might change direction at, at those nodal points as well. Mm. I had a vision of um, uh, pyramids being up on that east coast and they could, it kind of came down and then there was one between Victoria and um, Tasmania. Interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was amazing. Um, and did you say that was in Byron that you did that? Yeah, yeah. I had an experience in Byron too with the dolphins. Oh, um, did you? Yeah, back in 2016. And um, it was, um, I sat on the beach and um, there was heaps of people in the water and then I just started um, just uh, between myself, <laughs> I just started speaking this uh, light language and I felt like I was connecting into the water to the depths and it was going through the grids and it was speaking to the whales and the dolphins. And then, um, and because, oh, that's right, because I actually always kind of had this feeling there was this wave, massive wave coming towards that east coast of Australia. Anyway, so when I got to that beach and I did that and I stood up and I turned around and everyone's like, oh, and, like, and I'm, I turned around and there was dolph, like there must have been about 10 dolphins that had come up right, you know, where that, like there must have been two metres from the sand. Like they were in the water with all of it. Everyone's like, oh, goodness <laughs> like it was incredible incredible so I yeah that connection like I really felt like those those um sounds they really really feel them yeah yeah and I'd, I was doing light language as well um as part of the activation but I I very much felt the whales and the dolphins were activating me and my light language and then when the whales um my last year there, which was 2016, we might have been on the beach at the same time. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, when the whales came back, so they, they go north and have their, their young and then they come back with them and, and they come right into the bay, like just behind mm. the first wave. It's, you know, you wonder how they, how they don't kind of um, beach themselves. But I felt often because that whole bay is like horseshoe shape and, and you can see the whole of the bay and you can see when they're coming in because you get that little glint when the sun you know is, is on the body just as, as their top fin kind of just comes just above the water and you can see them coming and they would be just in front of me and I'd be doing light language to them and I'd look and they wouldn't be anywhere else on the beach they'd just be in front of me and yeah. like frolicking and and you know going over and I felt that there was there was some reciprocation of something that I was doing with the calves it was like they activated me and I was activating the calves kind of thing like there was this beautiful beautiful reciprocation which yeah. just out of curiosity um so you've got the lighthouse and you've got main beach the sea's in front, you've got main beach to the left, and then there's another beach on the other side of the lighthouse. Do you remember which mm. beach you were on? Um, it was, so the lighthouse and then the main, I think it was the main beach. So going towards the Conjol. Yeah. 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 Yeah, nice. I, I spent my last year, I, I lived on the other side, so I spent most of my time on, on Tallow's Beach. Yeah. Just the female side on that side yeah. the other side for masculine ah uh, yeah yeah all right wow yeah. yeah we we were there in um was it october or september yeah we left in december ah uh, <laughs> yeah, we probably walked past each other 
Oh my goodness, it's so funny, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Mm. So what are your plans for the day? It's, I just say thank you for getting up at six o'clock for this or getting up at <sighs> six so that we could start. The Wi-Fi is good. <laughs> it's a good connection. <laughs> Um, what am I doing for, I have to take my um, son to high school and um, yeah, I don't actually have any plans today, which is nice. My day actually, my kind of week begins tomorrow when I, when I reconnect with the beautiful ladies in the group and it's all go from there. <laughs> um, are in Australia or are they all over? There's three in Australia. There's one in the UK and two in the US. Oh, nice. Yep. Nice with the time zones, especially after the clocks change. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, I spend the next three days just doing sessions with them. And then, um, but yeah, I've got kind of the week, the weeks of my weeks free. So, which is good. But yeah, um, hopefully we um, have some beautiful weather today and I can get back outside and enjoy the sun. Yeah. Awesome. You're about to put your groceries away. <laughs> <laughs> and get ready for your beautiful evening yes it is just after eight o'clock is there Thank anything you know. else that you want to share about while you're on um no I feel like I've um yeah I've and my heart feels full and I'm I'm so grateful to be um having this conversation with you which is always a beautiful connection so thank you thank you for having me and it was it was an honour as well that you called me in after because you mentioned the um, coming off your bike that you yeah. called me in around that time when you were in recovery from that. So it was I really yeah. loved, loved doing that session with you. It was yeah, really cool. kicked off everything with you and I, didn't it? <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So thank you. And yeah, I I definitely would like to speak to you about the. Um, about the vibrational essences yes i have them up here ready to um to create now so yes, yes. i want to learn from you <laughs> i want you to remember <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's let's do magic less. what was that sorry let's do magic <laughs> yeah that's yeah. what it feels like i've done crystal essences um which I guess is a similar similar way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very excited by this prospect. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, beautiful. Always a pleasure. Mm, it's been an absolute pleasure. And thank you to everybody who's joined us as well. Yay. If you feel like sharing, please do. Because I'm, yeah, I'm, I need to, find out some more groups that I can join that would be happy for me to share things like this in because I only really share in two groups which I'm sure there's more than that out there that I can do so if anyone knows of any groups that I can share this kind of <laughs> chatting let me know yeah absolutely yeah and thank you thank you Denise have a beautiful evening I will have a wonderful day lots of thank you darling family yes thank you Bye. Not a lot.